All right, video number one. Load it up. Got the, the feed back there. So on the day schedule, we gotta fill up a bunch of feeders. And along the way, we'll be checking traps, and resetting traps. That's generally what I do on Mondays is feed and traps. So let's we'll see how that goes. So right, right there is no good. Uh, yeah, those tracks right there, no good. Got plenty of deer tracks. But you gotta watch how many coyote tracks you get. Plenty of deer tracks. Just gotta watch some coyotes. Feeder number one. Empty. I got it down to the mud out here. So it takes three bags of uh, deer feed mixed with one bag of shelled corn. So let's get that knocked out. What are you doing down there? Save these bags from the co-op and give us a little bit of change back on these. Feeder number one done. Nine more to go. coming up on my first trap and I don't see anything so not a good sign but we'll see what's up here nothing marshmallow's still in there there's my flag there's coon trap, so that's, this is called a, a DP, dog proof trap. All right, there's a marshmallow in there. The coon or possum reaches their hand down in there, grabs a marshmallow when it pulls it out. Trap goes off and it holds them there until I get here. And there's coon tracks going up and down both sides of this road, but no coon in my trap. That's just aggravating. But we're gonna be trying a different uh different kind of bait soon so we'll see how it goes right now i'm just using a marshmallow and a lot of times i have fire ants in there so we're gonna be trying a different kind of different kind of bait soon all right on to the next line what we call feed line for the uh, quail so it wraps way up in these pines back here but but it starts right here and this is supplemental feed that we give the quail this is all wild quail that we have here and the customer's goal uh right now his uh, next 10-year plan is to build his 
wildlife quail population so it's pretty cool and i'm gonna open the gate i oh, forgot to do that because i was talking i'm gonna open this this door down here yeah. there we go so this sprinkles out you can control how much it comes out and then when you drive it spreads the seed and the idea is let me see that. the idea is to give them give the quail supplemental feed during the winter all right let's finish this up coming up on our first live trap on our second feeding station oh and hot dang mr rocky how you doing sir so here we go we got us a coon pretty good size coon and uh yeah they ain't all cuddly things will tear you up so i just talked about our quail and trying to build the quail population uh these guys right here the uh coons possums skunks uh, they're known as nest raiders so they will absolutely destroy a uh, quail population before it even starts so that is that's the goal of the property owner is to give his quail the fighting chance and there are so many raccoons you would never ever hurt the population of raccoons and possums and skunks like it because there's just so many of them down here and this is the mixture that we are going for here you got the deer feed on top and you got that corn spread out down below it if you didn't mix it up the deer because they're like children would eat the sweet stuff first and leave the rest so that's what it looks like. On to the next. Another one. Empty. And I was really expecting that one to do good. Um, let's see if you can see it right there. It is right there in that walkway up there. A little, little dog proof. And I was really expecting that one to do good. But I ain't caught nothing on that since I moved it there. So I'll be moving that pretty soon. Like I said, I got a, a, di a different kind of bait that I'm going to start using, I think, in the upcoming weeks, just to see if it makes a difference. We got one more up here. We'll run up here and check it. Nothing. On to the next. So, this one's still got a little bit in it, but we're gonna change it out because it's done got rotten, got flies, bees in there. So we're gonna clean all that out and get a fresh marshmallow in there. Okay, let me see if I can do this. Prop up my camera somehow. Oh. Um. so take your marshmallow and this piece right here it's actuating another piece of metal inside the tube right there you're not going to be able to see in there probably that's your trigger and your marshmallow you bait needs to go below that trigger man that's nasty in there all right you squeeze and there's different names for these different parts but i don't know them so put it right there in that notch now that trap is set so whenever 
a raccoon or whatever comes along, puts their hand down in there, they're gonna try and pull up on that marshmallow that is under that trigger. And when they pull up, this is gonna release and they got them by hand. Hopefully we'll be able to show y'all an example of that today. We'll see. So now that is set. Marshmallow down in there. On to the next. We're running low on feed. It'll be time to go back soon. Here's an example of ants. And this is what I have a problem with. 90% of the time. Look at all that. Fire ants. So. Now I'm just baiting. I would have put another marshmallow in there. Because if I put another marshmallow in there, they're just going to eat it up. And then a uh, raccoon ain't going to mess with it if it's got a bunch of ants in it. So I'm probably just going to leave it right there. And I'll come back to it. And on these live traps, like what I just caught that coon in, all we do, I've tried different things, but. So far, we just, right now, we're just using fish bait. Stinky fish bait. And every now and then, I'll put corn or something like what I'm putting in the feeders. But fish bait, it is. All right. We're at the next feeder. Let's see what kind of condition it's in. So we had to use some, uh, some different feed last time because the co-op was out of what we normally get and you can tell they didn't they didn't even finish yet but we got what they like today <sighs> it stumped out pretty good go over here and check my trap and i can see we got something in it Mr. Possum. All right. So that's a, another nest of quail and turkey saved. On to the next. Down to the bottom. Once you get down to the bottom, you gotta go ahead. Get down to this gap right here. Cause it ain't gonna feed out by itself. Just to go over again, the reason that uh, on this particular property, the property owner is wanting to target coons and possums and uh, skunks. Like I said earlier, they're all under that category of nest raiders. So whenever turkeys make their nest, lay their eggs, quail, those particular animals will raid the nest and just hurt a uh, bird population, a grass bird population, tremendously. So that's our purpose for targeting those, those animals specifically. And around here, the quail population has plummeted drastically over the last uh, several decades. So it's really cool to be a part of what this landowner is wanting to do and bring back a wild quail population pretty much from scratch. He ain't ever brought in quail before and you can't release uh, tame quail into the wild cause they, uh, they can't survive. So this is a multi-year project that uh, he's taken on and it's really cool to be a part of that. And like I said, we've already started to see the, the numbers come up uh, on his property so it's pretty cool and it's funny whenever the landowner uh, originally bought this place 
their first project was to uh, build the deer population. And in doing that, they put out these feeders that you see and they fill up and they put out cameras and they had a um, biologist come in and actually uh, photograph their deer herd and ha had the whole herd photographed so they knew what they were working with and it would give them an idea of what they needed. But uh, while they were doing all this uh, monitoring of the deer population, they started to see all the coons and uh, possums on their trail cameras coming up to their deer feeders. And they started trapping these coons so they wouldn't go through as much deer feed in a week. And they would say they would see 20 or 30 coons in one picture uh, at these feeders. But uh, the funny thing is, once they started trapping these coons, the next, the following year, and they were catching, I'm told, 20 coons a week off of this one property, uh, 20 plus. So the next year, not only did they start saving money on their corn and feed, but their turkey population jumped up and they tied it together and then of course they started doing the research but oh okay so we we were helping this we were helping the turkey population and didn't even know it so now they've got the the deer squared away years ago they got their turkey population looking pretty good uh like i mentioned a couple of times before uh their primary focus is on getting the uh wild bobwhite quail population up and that's what we're working on here getting rid of these nest graders so we can get those populations up hmm. another empty so this is another dp that i put out expecting to get something within the first week and this is the second week that it's been here we got a solid trail don't know how well you pick it up on camera but solid trail going up through here and i haven't been doing this long but from what people have told me and the reading that i've done they say to put these things on sign trap on sign put your sets on sign and supposedly coons uh use these same this is this is a deer trail right here but coons use game trails this is what this is a wild game trail so coons use the same trails that deers that deer use so i'm really shocked that i haven't caught nothing on this one but like i said a couple of times before i'm gonna be changing the bait up here pretty soon so we're gonna keep checking the traps and uh filling up the feeders See how we do. We've caught two so far. Live traps. We ain't caught nothing in a foothold yet. All live trap action. So, the question is, what is this video about? What is this channel going to be about in general? And the short answer to that is, uh, I was unhappy with the job that I had career job a 401k job miserable and I changed that I stepped away stepped out of my comfort zone to a job that I love coming to that I look forward to coming to on Monday that gives me more time with my family where I'm learning a lot uh, I'm going to be talking about the business that I started when I quit my uh, full-time job and you're just going to be riding along with me as uh, I go about my days with my business and with uh, my new job. And I would like to encourage other men, other fathers, husbands, family guys, that you don't have to be miserable going to work every day. You don't have to be bringing that misery home with you. And if you want to improve your family life improve your work life and it's hard to step away from 
those kind of jobs because they give us security and the world tells us uh, you gotta have you gotta be out there doing this this and this to provide for your family and they they paint us or give us a model of how the world thinks that we're supposed to be doing this when in reality that's not the way that you have to do it at all you can branch out and do your own thing so that's what i want the these upcoming videos and my channel in general to be about just to encourage other guys that it is possible to step out of your comfort zone and start over and i hope y'all stick around i hope i can be an encouragement to somebody and uh we'll see how it goes y'all stick around all right we're wrapping up the day uh, i did uh eight out of ten feeders so i got two feeders i gotta fill i'll do that tomorrow and i did maybe half the traps that we have so that'll also be done tomorrow but overall we've had a successful day another enjoyable day uh, i got a couple of cameras i gotta pick up uh game cameras uh, see what's on them tonight and that's it a successful day a happy day and we're gonna do it all again tomorrow y'all come back we'll see y'all then <laughs>